<laughs> okay. Hi, Julian. Thank you for your time. Hi. Thank the you first for the question. Invitation. The first question would be that you have a quite amazing background. You have been teaching, you've been performing, you've been dancing, you've been producing, and now it's your second residency where you mm. act as a mentor and you guide the artists to join the communities and mm. vice versa. So how did you come to the community-based mm. artistic practices? Well, I feel I, I never came to the community. I feel like it's been in the core all the time. So... Um, my my dance history and everything comes directly from culture and directly from um, from doing stuff with people so the art itself has always come second to to the to the social part of it so it sort of feels just logical All right. to work in that way and work community first Okay, and your basic genre as far as I understand has always been hip hop and hip hop is very social and political and mm. it's a lot about engaging mm. engaging the community so how did hip-hop background mm. influence your artistic practice because you mm. it's it's something that you've been engaged with but it's not something that you limited yourself with mm. yes that is true it's um it's in the core it's in the core of everything i do um i i might broaden it to some extent at least nowadays to some kind of uh maybe africanist aesthetic so hip hop has been it's been my love and it's been my culture and it's been it's been present in everything I do and it still is and the art forms of hip hop come secondary to the culture so it's all about being together with people who are looking for the same kind of social engagement and if it happens to be dance then it's dance if it happens to be rap then it's rap if if it happens to be DJing then that's what it is and I think that's also something precious, precious about the hip hop culture and about its relationship to the art that has sprung out of it. Um, that from that perspective, there is no need to create some kind of um, holistic art because it already is holistic and it already is in relation. And I personally don't really believe in, in the West, Western take on uh, on art, or when I'm thinking about the modernist and postmodernist um, lack of situatedness, lack of relation. I believe in relation. So me doing something, wh whether it's art or just be, everything has to do with everything. I don't believe that you can put dance on the stage and then it doesn't have anything to do with anything else. Abstractness doesn't work in my perspective like that. So I believe that everything I do through the arts and through um, through any form of uh, engagement is always in relation to everything that is happening around it and always have to always has also to always has to take into consideration the influences and the effects of what is happening. Mm. That goes very much in line with the observation you made during the last Variaka Art Residency, which was mm. also the part of Crowd Dance, about non-linear percentage of uh, time. Mm. So, uh, how do you feel about time flowing here in Variaka? Um, yeah, that is really, yeah, that's really an important and an interesting, interesting uh, take, and I, I appreciate you picking it up. Um, I. I like to play with the thought of time being non-linear because time is only linear because that is our perception of it and we understand it as a thing starts now and ends then and something happens in between but when we think of um, instead of thinking about time and we think of place as being being the dynamic and stat and time being the static for example then we can think of being in this space and every time that has happened here still exists here and when i'm for example on stage and i'm dancing on that stage in that physical place which is dynamic and think of time as being static then all the ghosts on that stage influence whatever i do so the history of a place influences and has effect it it's a paintbrush that does give a layer to everything i do so the relation to what has gone but then also whatever i do will have ripple effects big or small to the f in the future so whatever i do cannot be 
without relation to whatever comes next either. What do artists respond to this concept when you share? Oh, I believe there are many that share this concept or this idea. It's not uh, necessarily unique in that way. Um, there are many who probably want to hold on to uh, abstractness and individualism in that sense of being able to say that I have the artistic freedom to do whatever I want and it has no relation to anything, anyone else. And that is their choice and their culture. And I just don't agree with it. Doesn't mean that they both can't exist. Mm. What, what have you been witnessing here when artists who come from different parts of mm. Europe work with communities and they kind of they have very global concepts, mm. they have very rich backgrounds, and then they come to a really tiny space like uh, Badiaka Garden or the art hub uh, in the in, in in the cabin, and they deal with tiny things. So how do how how do you feel the artists feel working with the communities here in Varyaka? Um, when this residency was started, like during the very planning phases of it, one of the first things that I was uh, that I was told or what was in discussion was that um, Goethe is trying to create a dance residency that is not a dance residency. So then the idea of dance being much more than something performative necessarily, that it does have other layers, which is of course a bit tricky because we're stuck in the structures that we are in and trying to work from within those structures with new logic is not always easy. But a place like Varyaka forces new logic so there is no studio space there is no paying audience there is a very strong community but when you look around you don't see them so then the entry points to what community work is is very different so if i was in in any bigger city for example uh, in in central europe i could go to a production house and then say that okay my target group is 15 to 20 year old people and they would find people that community of my defined defined target group with a certain set of defined um, uh, defined interests whereas a place like this also with the mass being so much smaller you literally have to try to understand the logic of everything that is happening around and find entry points which could mean just one person and working with one person who will then work with someone else who will then work with someone else and that's how you touch the community and i believe in in this rep reciprocal uh, relation relationship with not necessarily the artist coming to share some practice with somebody who doesn't know but actually an artist giving space for this person to art articulate what they are doing and being a maybe helping with tools to share that or being able to elevate or uh yeah like bring that to the light yeah and also it seems like that it's uh, kind of like softly and non-aggressively mm. rebuilding the hierarchical the vertical structures into something mm. horizontal how mm. how optimistic or realistic are you mm. about that in uh, because you've been witnessing and you've been a part of mm. all those art scene and uh so do you think that maybe maybe something mm. was triggered by the corona lockdowns maybe some people were just like realizing that old structures are out of date so mm. what are your thoughts how is it evolving is it evolving mm. or are we since the lockdowns are in the past and there are more challenges now like the the terrible war so mm. what what do you think is happening with this kind of evolution of the structure mm. the promoting of the horizon mm. we once again come back to relation so everything is happening all the time and not everything is moving in the same direction all the time so some some things go forward some things go backward and something stays in between and i think that's maybe an acceptance that artists as artists we need or it's a thing that as artists we need to accept that no matter our endeavors no matter the how how beautiful art we make some things go forward something some things go backward and um art in itself is well maybe this is maybe the controversial part then that i don't believe in the uh, in in the necessi necessity of art in itself. Um, I believe that art is a consequence 
of what we do. A beautiful consequence that I love and I, I love to work with. But if the question were to be, do I sacrifice dance or do I sacrifice interacting with people? I will sacrifice dance in a second. But I'm happy that dance is what I use to interact. But it could be something else as well. And when we as single people who live single lives and have the limited time to experience life and limited tools that we can build, we can't, uh, we can't do everything. So I use dance, I use words, I use music, but I don't use painting, for example. Okay, well, I maybe, don't use you know, sculpting. Nothing so, is linear. <laughs> exactly. So then um, the fact that I use dance doesn't make it more important than what, what somebody else uses. Or the fact that I feel dance is important doesn't mean that gardening couldn't come to the same conclusion. But then that's the community versus individual. So on an individual level, dance is very important to me. But when I think about a community, it, it might not be. And as an artist, um, I feel that that acceptance leads to better community-based work. When you're ready to put aside your ego and ready to put aside your years and years of training and accept that, okay, maybe this is not the right tool. All right. All right. So what has been the right tool for Varieka mm. so far? Well, I think Varieka has demanded very many tools. So um, when I'm thinking about the artists who were here last year and the artists that are here this year, they all have done some dance, which has been great. They have also been in very deep discussion both with each other and with me and with the people working, but also with people outside of our working circle. Um, they have done some gardening. They have gone trekking on the art path in the woods, whisking away mosquitoes. Um, they have gone exploring the coasts of the island. They have uh, sat at restaurants or at the, at the single restaurant that is in this area just um, being part of that evening where other local people are playing bingo and having quizzes and trivia and stuff like that. So there are many ways to, many ways to, um, to converge. And if, if you decide that it's only dance or it's only discussion, it's only interviews, it's only archeolo an archeologic perspective, then you miss out on a lot. Yeah, so absolutely. I think it's that, um, it's the intersections. Right. Make everything right. interesting. Right. How did you break the ice of the communities? And now I'm not speaking just about mm. Varieka or some um, local communities that mm. you have been doing the workshops, mm. uh, artistic workshops with, but also I'm talking about your experience as a teacher because mm. you have worked with kids of different ages. So, mm. and obviously, uh, that perception of no borders and non linear and art being like a part of everything. Uh, it's not a perception that we are encouraged to carry through life. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of, you have to break the ice. Mm -hmm. You have to, 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 to make people trust you. Mm -hmm. So what was the most challenging for you in that work in, in, in building the connection to mm -hmm. the community? Well, it's a lot about value. So I value dance, I value art, I value music. But that doesn't mean that somebody I talk to will value it as well. So it's my job as an artist or as a facilitator to create that value or at least make visible the value of whatever I do. And if I go in with the, with the idea or the perception of this is important to me, so it must be important to you, the ice is not going to be broken. So it's all about understanding the context of where you are so if i'm with a uh, a 13 year old kid who whose main aim and goal in life in that moment is to work on mopeds they don't care about the head spin you know they don't care about uh, necessarily like making music but they might listen to music and they might like to watch somebody dance so then the question is that what is an active role? And can somebody who is a hangaround, 
I usually call them hangarounds. So people who are present, but not necessarily um, what we would see as active participators. Then the question is, what is active participation? So I've had workshops where I've worked with, with youth at, at youth centers, and we've had three people actively partaking in a dance workshop. But we've had eight people in the space. And then the next week when we came back, there might be four people. And the next week when we come back, there might be three new people, but all the four others are not taking part. So then that fluidity can, um, is important. And um, I wouldn't say lowering, but changing your expectations of what an outcome should be. Which, for example, in this residency, we've been talking about a lot, though um, there are no specific outcomes, but there are outcomes. So we don't aim towards, um, or like when I'm working with, with youth in, in my optimal position, where I would love to work with them, is that we don't have any pressure for outcomes, but we have an aim of social engagement. So we are together, and I have these and these and these and these tools, and I can suggest that we can do stuff together. But if they want to do something else, then my methods have to be pliable enough to accommodate that. And I feel that is where the ice gets broken when you're able to create value by recognizing the value of what they do and recognize, okay, maybe mopeds is the world is the most important thing right now. And mopeds have designs on them. And some of these designs can be graffiti based. And I happen to be a hip hop artist who is acquainted with graffiti. Do you want to practice lettering with me? And while we do this, we can listen to music in the background. And I can tell you about how this music relates to the culture and how the culture relates to graffiti. And That's then, how you get to the heart. Exactly, it's like gateway art <laughs> in a sense. But once again, the art comes second. So it could have been graffiti lettering, or it could have been music, or it could have been whatever. But the most important thing was the social engagement, being together, doing something together with a common aim. It's hard to ask this question about, uh, about, uh, about the answer about not awaiting for specific mm. outcomes. However, do you have a favorite project or mm. that you're working on, or the dream project, or just basically mm. an artistic dream, the mm. outcome. Yes. <laughs> you would want to see. <laughs> I feel the artists, um, our main work, most important work as artists, are to dream of a future that doesn't exist. Our, our most important task is to imagine something that the engineers can build later, in that sense. Uh, so yes, I do have a lot of uh, dream <laughs> dream projects and dream work. And I think it has more to do with the circumstances of work, not necessarily what I do. So once again, it can be dance or it can be something else, but it's the working environment. All right, so you want to so. change working environment. Good. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so there are many, yes, We're there are many, in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So there are many, and that's what a lot of my work has been has been about changing the places I work and the structures within which I work to make them more ethical, um, more uh, less hierarchical, and so on and so forth. And that is the practice, or that's what I feel that that is the actual practice. And the art, as a consequence of such structures, will reflect the structures that it's, uh, that it's in or the process of the changing of the structures. Um, but yeah, I would like to actually pinpoint one project that has passed that I, I felt was a special success because it was one of the hardest. All right. Um, we worked, when I was working in the Arts Promotion Center of Finland, we worked in Pyhajoki with, um, with youth at a youth center or worked with the youth center and all the youth that were able to get in there with us. Working with the four elements of hip-hop, so we're working with DJing and music production, rapping, dancing, and graffiti. And the idea was to create possibilities for youth to try these things if they're interested. And if not, just come and hang around with us. And eventually, uh, we got quite a few that were interested in graffiti. All right. And 
the problem with graffiti in this case, and which is also in very many other cases, is that graffiti is illegal in very many places. So once you've sketched enough in your book, you might want to paint somewhere else. And we as project leaders, we could come and then build a temporary wall and then you get to spray. But then when we leave, the wall goes away. Oh, no. So then the question is, like, I mean, because they were temporary, like made out of paper or made out of plastic or something like that. So then the question is, once we're given these youth, these tools, and then another part of society is telling them that these tools are bad, how do we negotiate with that? And what we ended up doing was working in collaboration with the, with the municipality and with the library. And we funded um, a wall. So we built a, a wall out of plywood. It was a triangle that is legal space for graffiti. You're allowed to paint there. And we donated spray cans to the library under an unofficial condition that they loaned them to the kids with just by, by uh, with, with your library card. And that when they get finished, they would buy new ones and replace them. All right. So um, this was a few years ago, and it's my understanding that it has continued. So you can, uh, Pyhajoki is one of the very few places in Finland where the library has a graffiti wall and you can go to the library with your card and say, I want a can of red, a can of blue and a can of yellow and then go paint. And then after that, return, return the that can. That sounds amazing. It is amazing. Should we do it in all law? We should. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like when you talk about it like this, it's simple. Like, of course. Yeah. It's obvious. But all those negotiations with the officials. Exactly. So before it happens, there are a lot of things that need to happen before very simple things happen. And that I feel is the, is the community-based work and the creation of value. So not only creating the value for the youth, but also telling the municipality officials that this is worth doing. And through that, I'm working with the community and creating opportunities for this community of youth without me bringing my art. Yeah, and it's all about the process. Like, so exactly. basically, the outcome is the sustainable process. There. Exactly. Yeah, and which brings us kind of like it will encircle our conversation uh, because as the last question, I would, I would actually ask you, uh, how global do you think it is? Uh, this kind of um, emphasizing the process uh, rather mm. than the outcome. I my my personal experience was that I was. Um, I was uh, reporting about revolutions and mass protests, like big things, and then I thought, at some point, okay, but how how do we with you know with little things with uh, community work? How do we deal with global stuff? Mm. How do we deal with white privilege, with homophobia, with tortures, with mm. climate change? And then I realized that well, if you change one thought in one person, it mm. actually changes the whole world because mm. some new some new process starts or kind of like i don't know evolves so so mm. are you are you as optimistic as i am that sounds too too optimistic yeah I um yeah i think it's my duty as an artist and as somebody who is trying to bring forth change it's my duty to be optimistic otherwise this work is not is not worth doing um things happen on many scales and I'm repeating myself, but everything has to do with everything. And when I think it's always easy to look back and then say, okay, this thing changed this thing. But when we're in the moment, we don't know. So we don't know the ripple effects of whatever we're doing. And many of the things we will actually never witness even. It's like planting a tree. You don't plant a tree for yourself. You plant it for a person who will come hundred years after you. And that's how I see, that's how I see this kind of work as well. That it is this, that you're affecting one person and another person and another person and you're being affected the whole time. So it's each one teach one. Whenever you're in an encounter, it's not only you teaching, but you're also learning. Which means that when you meet the next person, then this person influenced you to relate to this person in a different way. And then these people helped you to relate to this person in a different way. And then we're all growing together. Right. And uh, like when I think about, for example, hip hop, now it's a global thing. You can't, there are very few places in the world where you can go and mention hip hop and nobody has heard of it. 
Of course, not everybody's part of the culture, but it has become a global culture. It has become a local culture. So there are local versions of this global culture every, in almost every corner of the earth. But it was started by teenagers in the Bronx, underprivileged teenagers in the 70s. And we're not talking about hundreds and hundreds of youth. It started with a community of hundreds and hundreds of people, and some of them doing something, some other people doing simultaneously similar things, these people meeting up, and then these people meet up, and then it grows, and then we're like, okay, this makes sense, it's a culture. And then there are other people who would like to share and partake in that culture, and the art forms that follow, then they follow their consequences of this social culture. And the kids in in 73 and their house party did not know that we will now be sitting in Oulu having a tiger talk about hip hop right right uh, are you uh, are you are you thinking that in terms of cultural ex exploitation and expropriation mm -hmm. it's also kind of developing towards the awareness from mm -hmm. where hip hop starts the awareness of the historical and deep social roots I think it's both. I think it's both. We live in a capitalist world and we we are not immune to the world we live in. So there is a lot of exploitativeness in it, in the way it is shared, but there is also a lot of depth, depth and worth in it. And um, as I said, it also comes back to Africanist cultures. So it's not only about, okay, rap music, but it's also whatever came before that to create that. It's not only about um, doing a dance performance, is about, okay, what does it mean to dance in a cipher? Where do those traditions come from? When we're dancing together, when we're doing certain motions and certain relations, they have they are echoes from the past, echoes from tra traditions that, that we might not even recognize. They are echoes of things that we have forgotten, but our bodies have not. So all that comes together and accumulates and becomes something that is very whole and around it can happen a lot of other things. And I think the work of us, um, or the duty and the work for us who actually take upon this culture and decide to share it and decide to spread it, or spread that knowledge, we have, the, uh, we have the responsibility of shedding light on the other parts as well, and not only writing on the coolness of it. The very last question, let's get back to this metaphor of a tree. Uh, do you feel yourself as a lonely gardener? Do you feel yourself <laughs> as an outsider with this approach of responsibility and social engagement and community work? Mm -hmm. Or rather, there are other metaphorical cultural trees mm -hmm. emerging? There are a whole lot of things. And um, I don't believe that I do anything alone. Sometimes it might feel very, very lonely, especially being in a place like Oulu, which is like a mid-sized city, which means that a lot of people who come into the culture and want to maybe work with it more or be more engaged will move to other places where that engagement and that development is more possible. For example, Helsinki, where they can keep, keep going. And that does create that feeling of loneliness because then you're left behind. Or the fact that I have to travel somewhere else to different communities to partake in them temporarily it does create a feeling of loneliness. At the same time, it does also create the sense of, okay, even though I'm here and they are there, they come back. And then all these seeds that have been planted here grow somewhere else. And all those people are also planting seeds. And some of them do come back in different ways. So I also think of it as, uh, as culture. When I think of it again as culture first, and it's not about my occupation, so the fact that there are certain opportunities here or not, and sometimes the work itself is very lonely when you have to do a lot of parts of it on your own. But then the culture is not lonely. I never do anything actually alone. So everything I do is in relation to and often with other people. And that is a priority. So the garden keeps growing. The garden does keep growing and multiple gardens grow everywhere. Thank you very much, Julian. Thank you.